How to retire better from retirees who learn the hard way. <laughs> All right, so let me share with this email my man sent to me here this uh, afternoon. Check this out. Um, and then we'll go into this article real quick because this is uh, this is fun. So let me see if I can't find this. My man here, right here. All right. We paid off our house back in November of last year, 2022. I think it was, was due to me watching your videos. Our bare bones living expenses to include medical are 3000 a month. I will retire uh, from someplace and continue to work someplace else until August of, 20, of 2025. So he's retiring from one job, he'll get a small pension, not much, and then he's gonna stay on his other job. Uh, and not, and uh, let's see. And then uh, my time is worth so much more. He didn't say how old he is, but anyway, Thank you for helping this old and broke infantryman. And this guy used to be in the 10th Mountain Division because he says climb to glory. So, you know, because us in the 10th Mountain Division, for some reason, a mountain division uh, is in upstate New York. There ain't no mountains in Watertown, New York. Kind of weird. But anyway, so uh, that's good. So, did you hear that? His bare bones expenses are 3000 a month, which includes health insurance. Just making some brownies. And I was uh, licking the bowl, you know, because uh, I love brownies. I didn't like brownies, but man, brownie batter. I want to make sure I don't have any brownie left over my, you know, I didn't. I, I uh, saw myself had all kinds of chocolate right here, so I had to wash it. just want to make sure I got it all. That's so disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself and your shirts on. Oh, yeah, look, I made a, you see, made a big old mess on my shirt. Whew, don't tell Charlotte. Shh, don't tell Charlotte. Anyway. You're disgusting, Josh. Well, at least I have my shirt on right side in, right? Come on, come on. Anyway, so I want to share with you this because that that right there is uh, is huge. His bare bone expenses are three thousand bucks a month. All right. Now that's thirty six thousand a year, dude. Now does that mean he can travel? Not on three thousand a month, probably. That includes health care. But man, people can do this. I just don't get it. Anyway, so check this out. So here's a lady, you know, she looks sad. You sit by the uh, the hammock broke. You know, she's kind of sad. She looks like she's alone. The, the You know, it's her dying days of time. The leaves have fallen. The hammock broke. She's all by herself. A very depressing. Let's, let's, let's check this out. Doll E, which is Chat GT, GPT's uh, visual creator. And we're going to type in something. I'm going to say retired. Oops, retired widow uh, by herself let's see uh raking up leaves in the fall uh and retired widow retired sad widow there you go by herself raking up leaves. let's see what it comes up let's see what it generates for us shall we so let's go to chat gpt doll e and see what they come up with here and uh because i paid like 15 bucks to have all these things here and uh Let's see what comes up with. Yeah, right there. These are just literally just created in the fall. Yeah, tired, sad widow. Yeah, look at her. She's sad. Oh, she's sad. And this lady's sad all by herself. This lady's looks like a dude. That dude is sad. All by himself. Sad. Anyway, so going back to. So this creates a an image in your head, like how to retire better from retirees who learn the hard way. Lessons from retirees on the biggest regrets of their post work lives. <sighs> the way we retire now. So watch this guy. Investing for retirement means more than money. Jim Pilsner. He likes to drink. Pilsner beers, you know, you got lagers, you got IPAs, you got porters, you got stouts, you got Pilsners. He uh, regrets not setting goals for himself when he retired about four years ago. And when he's 74, so now he's 78. Look at that guy. He doesn't look like he's 78. He found there's only so much golf to play and only so much lunches to go to. I would counsel my younger self and any other, uh, and any other active achieving person to recognize what drives them and what success really means. He eventually figured out that two things that motivated him most during his career were taking action and learning new things. All right? And they're the same recipes he needed for retirement. So now he's enrolled at the University of Nevada uh, with two classes. Uh, he'll be taking the fall. He's studying a degree in political science and history. That's pretty cool. 
Retirees frequently don't realize how much their career provided a sense of identity worth. I was talking to these freaking wonderful couple today in Virginia. The guy's, I think he's like 70 or something like that. And I said, are you going to retire at 72? So you don't need to. I mean, he's just crushed. He's a crusher. You know, freaking, he's just dominating, just kicking ass and taking names. And he just likes what he does. He likes what he does. And I said, and he goes, the thing is, I don't know what I'm going to do once I retire. So that's a problem. And it's not a problem necessarily. His company needs him more than he needs them, but uh, he likes what he does. He's a good mentor. And he's got us all his ducks in the rows for his financial planning. He said, you know, if you do retire, maybe think about being a mentor for other people about their own financial planning. Because this guy had all his ducks in a row. We, you know, I, I dinged him on not having an umbrella insurance policy. He had one before, but he said it was too expensive. I said, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're, I, I, that doesn't make sense to me because umbrella policies are quite cheap. Um, and then their estate planning is pretty good, but you know, a little bit of updates need to be done there. And, and anyway, the, remember a revocable living trust becomes irrevocable at death of the trustee. Uh, or the grant, the grantor, I should say. So usually the grantor or the trustee is the same thing. And we kind of got to talk about that, but they, they know what they're doing. They just need a little kick in the pants. Anyway, I said, you know, you could do that. You could do, and they're really, you know, good Christian people. I said, you can mentor through church, all that stuff, because you, you got all your ducks in a row. But before you hang up your boots, think about what you're going to retire into, because it is, it's a challenge, especially for a lot of guys who are hardcore, um, you know, hardcore people that are hard driven. Um, let's see, people carefully plan out how they'll spend the money in retirement, in retirement but often give fair, far less thought to how they spend their time. Jay Holt re regrets not retiring sooner. He planned to spend his post years playing polo, but in 2015, he fell by playing and had to give up the sport. Yeah, right on. So he, he was like, I'm going to retire. He, he said, uh, I want to retire and have fun playing polo, and then he can't play anymore. Now he wishes he had a full, few more years to enjoy this activity, 100%. Relationships are the key to retirement. I cannot stress this enough. The best predictor of longevity, health, and happiness is the quality of your relationships. It's not just stupid Harvard, because who cares what Harvard says, but actually there's a study in Canada, and I think I just recently did a video on this, maybe on my live stream for locals. Homogenous societies with a little bit of elbow room where, uh, where you know people. You know, mostly rural, don't have to be rural, but basically it's homogenous. Similar train of thought, similar religious, just homogenous. That's homogenous, um, uh, what do they say? Diversity is, what do they say? Celebrate homogeneity. homogeneity. That's what I'm going to get as a t-shirt. Celebrate diversity. Uh, celebrate homogeneity. Homogeneity? Because homogenous societies where you have, you have your neighbors. But you got your neighbors a little bit far away to get away from them, but you have them there. A good community of self-minded people, self-thinking people. I'm telling you, man, it's huge. Um, same group preference. You gotta practice same group preference, man. You just don't go to stores that are pissing you off. Just say no. It's gonna make you mad. No, like I go to Costco, but try to shop. Try to do business with self-same people who think the way you do, act the way you do. That's I'm telling you, it's huge. Anyway, they did a study in 400,000 Canadians in homogeneity or homo homogenous societies, rural, somewhat rural, with low commute time, low debt in terms of their income, you know, basically having the mortgage paid off, critically important, critically important. Uh, let's see, uh, Rock and, uh, right here, Roberts and his wife, Rock and Robin. So we got uh, with Dan Roberts and his wife, Robin Roberts. I call her, she likes to be called Rock and Robin. Tweet, 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 Rock and Robin said only two, oh, let's see. His son and his family were just two hours away, and then they moved to New Zealand. They're two hours away in California, and they moved to New Zealand. And so now Rock, Roberts and Rock and Robin only see them twice a year. And it's only, look at New Zealand's a long ways away. And who wants to be in that freaking plane that long? He said he would have been able to afford a more frequent trips had he kept the door open to contract worth by maintain, maintaining his relationships and his project management certification. We miss our grandchildren terribly. That's sad, dude. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying. He's away from his grandchildren. They're literally halfway around the world. And uh, maintaining relationships is critical. Uh, let's see. Some e some even had people close to them pass away and regret not being able to spend more time with the loved ones when they well, while they could. Yeah. Uh, here's Arthur Parmentier. That's how we say it because that sounds like a French name, but Parmentier. Right. Retirement is longer than you think. This guy is 69. He regrets retiring at 65 rather than working a few more years, partly because he missed on a few more years of contributions to his retirement account. 
He uh, claims Social Security at 65, except in a lower monthly payment. Uh, had I waited two more years or maybe three, I would have been quite comfortable. Right now, I'm living on Social Security and trying not to touch my IRA. I think now I may live well into my 80s, so I have to be prepared to make sure my IRA will last me through those years. Did he not think about that before he retired? I mean, but I don't know. You didn't know that when you were 65? Social Security, we already know about Social Security. For many, the math favors starting at 70 for Social Security. Yeah, whatever. Um, the life expectancy for a 65-year-old is 84 for men. Again, so if you're 65, you're planning for 95 or 30 years in retirement. I say, why are you doing that? The life expectancy if you're 65 is 19 years. For women, it's uh, 22 years. And again, it depends on your health. I get all that. But still, it's like, I'm going to live till I'm 95. Where is the evidence for that? Now, some people have it. You know, I was talking to a guy not too long ago. I think his mom was like 100 years old or something. Uh, surveys suggest that many Americans vastly underestimate those numbers. Of 1,500 adults aged 45 to 80, polled by Society of Actuaries, 41% of pre-retirees and 37% of retirees underestimated their life expectancy by five years or more. They probably said their life expectancy was 78, because that's what everyone tells you. Like, oh, life expectancy is 78. It's, it's for a newborn, man. Um, and a person who posts, okay, we are talking about that. Anyway, so they, they, give, they have a sales pitch for a call of cost, maximize my social security.com. I like call, call of cost, by the way. He's a guy from BU. You know, he's a rabble rouser, a big lib, but uh, that maximize my social security.com is, is a good resource for sure. Anyway, I highly suspect that uh, a lot of you are actually overestimating your life expectancy, frankly. I do. And, and on top of that, it's weird they didn't say, like, as people age, they just don't spend as much. And the reason, again, you don't spend as much is so blindingly obvious. When you're on a fixed budget, you're going to make your income, your expenses match that fixed budget. It's just that simple. And fixed budget means you're taking a bit off your portfolio, 5% a year, plus your other income, Social Security, whatever. And you're saying, that's all I'm going to spend. It's, just, it's literally just that simple. And you say, all the other things I used to buy when I was working, because I had another paycheck coming in, I wasn't tapping into my portfolio. I had paychecks. I was still building my portfolio. I had income coming in. This is so fundamental. I'm surprised that the Wall Street Journal didn't mention it. You got income coming in, and you're still building to your portfolio. The income coming in is, is taking care of your discretionary expenses. So you got it's like this. You're doing like this. It's like you're milking a cow. Income's coming in. It's going out the door. Income's coming in. It's going out the door. All the while, you're still putting money away. Still putting money away. Still putting money away. And you can, as long as you're not taking on more debt, you're like, I can do that until I'm blue in the face. I can buy a freaking ribeye if I want. I can do whatever the hell I want. You know what I'm saying? I can throw away a shirt that I got chocolate stains on. I don't need it anymore. But once you start on a fixed income, you're like, no, I'm just going to keep that chocolate stain shirt. You know why? Because I don't need a new shirt. A, to impress anybody. I don't need a new shirt. It doesn't make me more comfortable. And this shirt's just fine. I just, just, you're just like, I don't need it. And I don't want to tap into my IRA like that one guy said, if I, just for a new shirt, unless I absolutely have to. Is, I'm telling you, it's fundamental. It's just fundamental. Anyway, I, you know, working another year, is it going to make or break you? I don't know. I mean, it could. Frankly, I've talked to a couple, I've talked to people all the time. So you got to have to another two years. It's just going to have to do it. But if you're already there working two more years, is it going to do anything? Yeah, you know, add more fuel to the fire. But if you're going to be freaking leaving a couple mil to your kids, is really one or two more years of labor going to do anything? No, it's just not, man. It's just, you're, you're, you're spending time that you could spend with with your wife, Rock and Robin, and you know, or your grandkids. And you know what? I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I'm just like, man. Anyway, the, you know, not one size fits all, but uh, but there is some good stuff in there. You know, retire to spend time with your kids. Make sure you can do it while you can, because you just don't know. You just don't know. Right. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.